So hi guys, and welcome to my channel. My name is Nima Boa, and today we're going to be reacting to a cringe, insane, woke TikToker compilation that I found. And these people are from my own community. I am homosexual myself, so all these people in this video are people from my own community. But I will say this, I do not agree with all the things that's going on lately with the pronouns and the identities and all this yada 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 and some people are just taking it to the next level so we are going to be reacting to it but I do have a new standpoint so I will try to get my opinion across while we're watching this and I always love to hear your guys opinion on things so comment down below what your opinions are on certain aspects of these videos and let me know what you guys think Do my estrogen shot <clears throat> estradiol Two needles, alcohol wipe, very important to cap off. I take half a milliliter once a week. So I pull this halfway, get it in, pull it down, pulling a little bit extra just to be safe. This is life-saving gender mental health affirming care. I want to be really clear. I would not be fucking stabbing myself with a needle once a week if I didn't need to to survive. Smaller needle that this comes with. I can see how she's trying to say this is trans woman um, taking a daily or weekly doses of estrogen to transform into a trans woman. So I can see why she's like saying that is important for mental health, but I feel like it's a little bit excessive to say that this is important for her to be able to survive because there are definitely also other ways to survive with your gender dysphoria by going to like a psychologist and making sure that you speak about things. It's wild to stay on a video and especially a video on TikTok where there's a lot of young people watching to say that for her to be able to survive and not being suicidal. She has to take hormones. I think it's that's a little bit next level to be saying that on a platform like TikTok, because that is another way to go about it. And that is going to a psychologist or a therapist to talk about things and how to deal with your thoughts and your gender dysphoria. Saying it like that may seem like the only way out is by taking hormones. And I don't agree with that. Put this on tight, tight, tight. Good. Not any air bubble. Yeah. I'm not able to put this in my butt because my body just doesn't work that way. What I like to do is pull a big piece of thigh, pierce it in, go all the way deep down into the muscle, pull up, make sure I'm not blood. Yep, we're good. And there we go. We're done. And every time I do this, I feel truly shocked because I fucking hate needles. My travel usually have cute princess band-aids. Ran out of those. I like to have a band-aid because, well, I just think it's cleaner that way, but also it makes me feel less anxious about having just given myself a shot. Anything it's from Muji. It is perfect if you have any kind of um, injection type medication that you take, uh, band-aids and alcohol wipes, different needles here, medication here, their prescription just in case I need it to show someone actually I do put that in there because I'm traveling and I don't know. That is how I do my self-care once a week. I have a problem with the way that she's delivering this message. The way that she's re representing this is by saying that the only way out of not becoming suicidal is by taking hormones. And I don't like that kind of a message because there's a lot of young people that are dealing with gender dysphoria. And I really feel like we need to normalize going to a psychologist and a therapist to talk about things and not only like a one or two kind of a appointment kind of a thing but like something for like a whole year where we really get to talk through things and, you, and where we really get to marinate on your 
thoughts in your conversations that you're happy to, with your psychologist and therapist instead of just because, and especially in America, you can get on hormones after one uh, appointment with the doctor. Like you don't even have to go through the psychologist and the therapist anymore. That's America is like next level, and it's and I think there's some states that are starting to go back because they can see what a turn this has taken, and it's done more damage than good with the new um, rules that have been set uh, during and before lockdown. Um, everything has really taken over. So I don't agree with her. Does it help maybe with her mental health? Um, yeah, but the way that she delivered it, I don't agree with that at all. So I used to feel like I was lucky for getting my period symptoms because they made me feel more like a woman. Okay, so this is a trans woman and she claimed that she get period pains, which I do not believe. That's another thing about these woke trans people. I don't even want to call them trans people because I know that uh, actually trans people out there that have been transitioning before became a thing on social media and people talk, talking about it and, and TikTok that have never claimed that they get the symptoms of period pains. That, that has never been a thing. It's like now it's like a lot of these Vogue people are trying to claim that they get period pains, which I don't understand. It's a weird thing. Yeah. Until tonight where my body decided to feel like a troop of goblins was trying to tear into my stomach and scoop out my insides with sharpened rusty spoons. I'm not lucky. about the importance of using inclusive language. The whole point of inclusive language is just to make sure people feel included, valued, and empowered. Over the years... Yeah, and not being disrespectful, I get that. I get it. I've had to adjust the way I communicate just to be more cognizant of that. So one thing I avoid saying is parents. Not everyone caring for a child is a parent. And this is where it takes to parents what's wrong with the word parents i've had lots of students in the past being raised by grandparents uncles aunts nannies etc but more specifically i also avoid saying mom and dad for the obvious reason that not everyone has a mom and dad many kids are so if you cannot use the words mom and dad and you cannot use the words parents how are you going to have a conversation with kid? how are you going to talk to the kid and ask about the ones that take care of the kid how are you going to ask that i don't the beginning of it, I was just like, yes, it makes sense. Inclusive language, I like that. We have to be careful with what we're saying, but taking the word parents and mom and dad is next level. Raised by okay. single moms. Many have two dads, two moms. All families look different and mm -hmm. it's really, really common. So please don't assume anything. Instead, I say grownups or families. Go tell your grown up to check their dojo message when they get home. It's such a simple fix just to make sure that no one feels unseen. Let me know if you want more videos like this. I think it's so important and I love talking about it. White people ruined most of everything. Before Europeans colonized the globe, thousands of indigenous peoples acknowledged and celebrated multiple gender identities as part of their culture. Not only did Europeans spread religion to get others to convert to their ideologies, but the idea of the gender man and woman was also a European ideology. That was one of the tools of the colonization process. And then men and women became the standardized gender identity as what we now know today. So your family thinks they're gonna get away with dead naming you and misgendering you this holiday season? No, they're not. You know why? Cause you're deranged kazoo kid. You play a wind instrument. You take your mouthpiece and you just anytime the wrong pronouns or the wrong name comes out and you be obnoxious as shit because they'll stop real quick what what i this is my sixth time seeing that clip and i still do not get it what is she on about can you guys let me know in the comments what is she on about i don't understand what she's trying to say with that but i've seen this clip as well i saw someone else react to it and i like 
the man that's working for the airport. I like his reaction. What about when adults employ misgenders you so intentionally? Sorry, well, while she's talk, while he's talking, you're talking. You just me. misgendered me again. Yeah. Okay. Multiple times. Gotcha. Both of you have. Sorry. Wasn't intentional, but if you yeah. want to take it personal. That's also well, open. she did do it intentionally twice. Gotcha. You're talking to me too. You said she, and then you said he. You're being condescending, and if you want to continue, Ooh. I have Port Authority escort you out the building right this moment. If you want to play that game with me, okay. Would you like to continue three days before Christmas? I really don't mind. I'm good. I'll just put this on. I am an abortion fairy godmother. Here is my magic wand. Here is my sack full of abortion pills, and basically. You put a positive pregnancy test under your pillow, and in the morning you wake up to abortion pills. I am an. That's crazy. That's crazy. What is saying to say to that? That is absolutely crazy. Non-binary middle school special education teacher, and okay. only my two paraprofessionals know that I'm non-binary because that's not like a conversation I want to have with parents yes. and admin right now. Anyway, one of my students said that I was a beautiful king the other day and that was just so affirming. It gave me the gender euphoria. Have a good day. What's up? Let's do a tour of my inclusive classroom. Starting off with the social justice word wall we will be growing throughout the year. We did our identity maps and what is identity? A large collection of books. More books. Here is our math studio wall. More books. Oh, a pronoun poster. A shocking pride flag. Yes, because love is a human right and everyone in this classroom matters. Our schedule wall. More inclusive picture books. Pronoun mascot. Supply and work areas. Project stations. Oh my goodness, inclusive posters. Books. Couch. Books. This is our growing calm center and affirmations for the morning and our cafe board. I'll be showing you more of that's my inclusive classroom. Go. So I really like um, the inclusive classroom. As I said, I'm from a Scandinavian country. I'm not from America, so I don't know how that is. I really, but I do like the display of like inclus inclusivity and you see like books with different colored kids on it as well. That's really, really nice to see. Um, but I just hope he doesn't like that. Well, depending on how old they are, I don't really know. Is there anything bad about that video? Isn't it fine with the inclusivity and like the posters and stuff? I don't know how old the kids are, but if it's like five-year-olds, I don't know if there needs to be like all these different flags and like there's certain things about them to like if they're five years old that may be a little bit too much a little bit too much explaining for the kids um when it comes to how young they might be and yeah because there's some conversation i could imagine that the parents probably would want to have with the kids first before they just step into a room and having to have everything on display. But that's the only thing. Oh, but this guy we're gonna watch right now, he's been trending a lot since lockdown. I know that. Doing um, no contact will feel worse. Can't lie. And he's so creepy as well. Yeah. <laughs> Cause right where you are now, if you go no contact with a family member, you'll feel worse. Right where you are now, where the relationship is now, is in equilibrium. They get to do whatever the heck they want, and you deal with it. That's not pleasant, but that is a deal. That is a pact, and both of you understand the rules. If you go no contact, the rules change. You're unmoored. There's no sense of safety and sense of place. Because the rules change, you change them, but the rules and the dynamic changes and what comes in sometimes to flood that void is guilt. But eventually, the guilt subsides. You work okay. through it. You're kind to yourself. I don't want to see this guy anymore. You'll never be a man. I love... Franz Hobe ever says something to me like, you'll always be a woman, you'll never be a man. I love to hit him with my low voice. 
and I look at them and I go, I'm more of a man than you'll ever be. I had to work for my masculinity. What work did you do? Feminine. Happy. Whether you're a trans woman or a trans man, I respect it regardless. It takes a lot of courage having to transition. Do I believe that a trans woman is a woman? No. Do I believe that a trans man is a man? No, I don't believe that. I would never call someone a trans woman or a trans man if I saw them in public because they are still men they are min minorities and they might and they're also very much in danger because there are really some hateful people out there. I get it. I came out when I was 16. That back when I came out, that was like, I'm 29, I'm 29 now. So do the math. That was back in 2011, 10, 2011 or 2012. Well, back when I came out, it was a big deal. Like it was, I feel like the things that I went through when I came out at 16, that's what people are going through now coming out. The ones that are coming out as trans now is like, it's a different time with a different scenario. So I kind of get like the courage that it takes and how much pressure that must be and all of that, but let's be real. Um, you're never gonna be a woman. You're never gonna have the symptoms of a woman if you're a man transitioning into a woman, and you never will be a man if you're a woman transitioning into a man. You will never have a penis. That's like that's like a big thing, and I would never recommend someone try to get that surgery because I've heard things on how they create a penis and. It doesn't seem like it's a good idea to do that. It just seems like you're gonna have more complications, and I think you that it's even more dangerous to try to make a penis when you have a vagina compared to if you have a penis trying to spit it up to a vagina. Like, but yeah, that's my standpoint. And that uh right, mom. Let's talk about my pronouns. So I use Z Zem Zero pronouns. These are a singular Again, pronoun, so you conjugate it the same way you would with he or she. So, Z has green and purple hair. I like zero makeup. And I think that cool vest belongs to Zen. So, that's how you use my pronouns. Uh, let me know if you, use, you guys use neo pronouns, because I think they're very cool, and I like hearing all the variations of them. See, that's, I think that's next level again. I would never, <laughs> but that, if someone say, oh, my pronouns, I see them, and or that she just said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't adapt to that. I just wouldn't. I'll probably find out another way around it to talk to the person or just leave the conversation because that is absolutely crazy. I, but I've never met these people. That's the thing. Is it just something that they display online or do they actually carry it with them throughout like in public? Um, interacting with people because I've never met a person like that. Hi, my name is Asa. I am a member of a DID system and I'm also a bearded vulture Therian. I have two questions. One is for other Therians, uh, specifically bird Therians. Therians. Um, and the other question is for other systems who have Therian system members. So first What's question that? for other bird Therians, what are some things you do that help you feel more connected to your stereotype? Like, I know that for people whose stereotypes what? are four-legged, they can do quadrobics, and that helps them a lot. Um, but obviously, that's not applicable huh? to bird therians. I also want to clarify, for anyone who doesn't know, um, quadrobics does not automatically equal therians. People can do quadrobics and not be a therian. So that's my first question, how to feel more connected to bird stereotypes. Um, and second question is for systems with therian alters. Do these alters appear human in a world, or do they appear as their stereotype in a world? Or is it kind of a combo situation? Like we have someone in our system who is both a guy and a vulture at the same time. We don't consider him a Therian because he doesn't consider himself. I don't know what she's about. Let's skip this one. Oh. Oh, I like the tap though. And nice colors. And do you guys okay. systems? Just very curious about how other people experience this kind of thing. Everything I say about gender is influenced by my whiteness, which is obvious, but there's an interesting uh -huh. second part to this. The rejections of gender and gender roles that I create and embody will still come from my whiteness, those acceptable to my constructions of self as a white person. I will likely uphold and encourage white beauty standards and see and more immediately accept other white rejections of gender. Essentially, even the most critical analysis of gender I have will still be white, and white gender rejection can and does uphold whiteness and white supremacy. 
supremacy. Queer appropriation of African American vernacular English is one example of this, as is mainstream exclusion of fashion excellence in black representations of masculinity, while celebrating white men for having basic hygiene, as if they're revolutionaries. Of course, that's not to say we can't attempt to take in other viewpoints, but it's still going to be a fundamentally white perspective. Even this is a white perspective, it's literally the only one I can give you. So if you want to learn how other people construct and deconstruct gender, you need to learn it from someone who doesn't look like me. Because So interesting thing about going no contact, especially with family or like a partner, uh, ending things and going no contact, you are doing it in a way to save the relationship, which is okay. Uh, it seems like you're dissolving the relationship, but in a way, things are not sustainable the way they are. And you can send them kindness and love from a very far distance. So in a way, you are choosing to bring love into the relationship. You are saving the relationship by destroying it. And that to me is a moral choice. Does that give me gender euphoria? Okay, so in a, in a way, with what he's saying with distancing yourself from certain family members, you could be close friends as well, can do good for you and the relationship. Um, I do agree with that. It's not something new. It has been talked about on different talk shows. I remember even watching Oprah and, it used, and she used to have different conversation about that and how distancing yourself can have a positive impact on your life for you to not feel like you are being restrained and you can let loose and like blossom in a way, if, if that makes sense. Um, but I think that the reason why he's being canceled a lot is because he has a really young audience and he has been saying that they, the kids should be talking a certain way back to their parents and doing crazy things. So that's why I think he's been canceled and he has been a lot in social media because of the things that he's saying on TikTok. Um, but what he's just said, I I do find it to be a good advice in certain aspects, but we would also think we really need to like try to put it in in context and give some examples of when that would be like appropriate or why you should be doing it or why you maybe should not do it and have a confrontational conversation with the family member or close friend you don't want to talk with anymore. Yeah. But it gets increasingly more unhinged doing housework. There's just something that's so mommy coded about destroying a mountain of dishes or like crisply folding laundry. Beating men. Not like physically beating men, but like winning against men in like sports or a video game or life itself. Also the color green. I understand that colors don't have gender, but a good green, that's just for the girls, babe. Next I'm gonna have to say crying. Before I transitioned, I was one of those girls dash boys who like never cried and now it's everyday like clockwork and honestly what is girlier than sobbing uncontrollably. Next doing any activity with the wind in my hair like running biking convertibles boats wind tunnels okay, those last three i actually haven't experienced but i imagine the euphoria would be off the chart also reminder that there is an ongoing genocide that we need to be paying attention to talking about and calling our reps about just because your feed is back to normal doesn't mean the world is back to normal okay i like that she talked about the genocide um that's always i don't even care who you are if you make people aware of that, that's really, really good. Um, and there are more than one genocide going on. I, I know in Palestine that's going on right now, and that's mainly what we see in the media, but there's also the genocide going on in Congo, and they're also being stripped from the minerals because all the big firms wants to create all the, our gadgets, like our laptops, phones, all the minerals that they use for that. Much of that comes from Congo, yeah. I would definitely recommend you guys look into that. But what I want to say about this person is that I feel like she's one of those persons that make fun of. If a person that doesn't really agree with people transitioning, I feel like a person like that is just going to make it seem more as a joke. And it, this is one of these people that gets a lot of attention, unfortunately, because they really make it, not only are they making jokes of other trans people that actually have the, that are actually dealing with certain issues, but they're also making fun of all the other trans people that actually do live a life and knows how to blend in, in society and have an everyday life without having to rub it in other people's faces. I feel like she's ruining it for them as well. Um, and that's the only thing I have to say. 
all these people are from my community. Uh, but I've never met people like that. Honestly, I've never met people like that. So it's always interesting to see videos like that. And I would love to see if these people actually work around talking like that in amongst other people, because I've never seen or heard that before. But yeah, but what do you guys think about this whole situation with the pronouns and identities and stuff like that? Um, let me know. And let me know what's problematic about it as well. So yeah, hope you guys like this video. Like and subscribe and maybe I'll see you in my next video. Bye.